Hello everybody and welcome to Waggers' Wings episode 8. In this episode we're going to look at some of the more common mistakes that you can make as a boom and zoom pilot. Even the, after the amount of flying and time I've ploughed into this game I still make some very stupid mistakes. The first mistake we're going to look at is probably one of the most basic mistakes and I'm afraid to say I do still make that mistake in live multiplayer servers. It's far more easy to do in the SE5, that is ripping off your wings, than it is in the SPAD, but as you'll see in a second, it is still possible. The second thing we're going to look at is the probably the most commonest mistake, which again, I still make, um, and sometimes very, very foolishly do it because I'm goaded by trolls. It happened to me recently. Um, and that is not leaving enough height differential between yourself and a very f uh, quick turning bandit, such as the DR1. So let's have a look at uh, my first act of stupidity. So here I am in the SPAD-13 attacking a DR-1 in a multiplayer server. Now um, I, I do the correct thing here, as when I see him turn I pull up and uh, prepare myself for another attack to try and get inside his turn uh, as, as, and with enough height to be able to roll to turn with him. So I'm starting to roll with the bandits and I'm pulling back and I rip off the wings because I was going too fast and I didn't throttle back. As I say, much easier to do the SE5 but uh, um, still possible with a SPAD-13. So let's have a look at the most common mistake uh, for, for Boom and Zoom pilots and that's not keeping the height differential or enough energy to pull out of the uh, the zoom into the zoom climb. So here I dive on the bandit and I zoom up far too far under the bandit. So when I zoom back up again um, I put myself right in his firing line and I don't cli climb up high enough to escape. So he fuels my uh, hits my fuel tank and there's the fuel leak. Very very frustrating. Happens to us a lot in multiplayer. So there I'm as good as dead because I'm going to run out of fuel so I might as well land. Now here is a bit of a more protracted fight and now this is against my good friend uh, NFF Gary. Thanks very much Gary again for agreeing to do this. Now here this is an example of me not keeping my height differential so um, I'm, I'm do diving on him, I'm trying to find the best opening um, and as you see here there's a good 300 meters there between me and the bandit so even if he does try to do that prop hang um, it's very unlikely he's going to be able to hit me from that range or, or be able to get his nose up in time. Um, so, so far in the fight I'm not doing too badly because you know I nearly got a snapshot off there. Every time I dive I zoom back up, use that energy to regain the height um, and can continue to maintain that height differential as I said of about 300 metres. So, so far it's not been going too badly as I said. So there we go, I couldn't get the, uh, the shot there so I pull up again. I'm not um, trying to uh, turn with the bandits, I'm trying to very very slowly turn above him, wait for that opening uh, for the chance to go in and make that, make that uh, killing blow. Um, so I feel here that I might have a good window, so again I put him for the dive and there I've got him um, in a stall and I take some shots. Unfortunately I get hit by a little gust of wind there. Now what I should have done there is because I see that the height I've lost the height differential is to dive or to uh, extend away. Now I've done the stupid thing which is to climb and I haven't climbed high enough. So now the height differential is only about 150 meters and he can roast me with that prop hang. Um, and he's hit my engine and caused a fuel leak. Um, and that happens all the time I see at Boom and Zoomers when they don't zoom up high enough after that the, after the dive. Um, so, what are the solutions? What do you do when you uh, you find yourself in this solution where you have a very good turning aircraft, even if you're above him? Um, in this case, um, I was taking on uh, a D7F in multiplayer, who was only about 100 meters below me, so a very, very dangerous height differential there. Um, so th there was a chance he might have been able to get his nose up to hit me um, if I'd uh, maintained a steady course. So here I'm just circling and circling, and I'm thinking, can I, uh, can I get that dive onto him, get onto his tower? And I'm thinking, I probably can't do it. Um, also because it's the D7F, and we're already at about 1.5 kilometers um, altitude, um, it's unlikely that I'm going to be able to climb above him either so I'm thinking well what are my options now I could either um, attempt the dive on him fail he would get inside my turn outmaneuver me and probably shoot me down so in this case I think well screw it I'm just going to dive away um, there's a chance he might follow me so the spad's um, engine um, it's a very very good engine to dive I'm hoping that he's going to be a bit of a noob there dive after me and over rev his engine but he doesn't take the bait and he keeps the height so there we go I've survived that encounter and I haven't been stupid but what if you want to engage that DR1? Um, it's not so exciting having to uh, spend ages trying to circle around your opponent and get in that firing opportunity. My advice is if you want to take on the DR1s, take a wingman or um, watch for when the DR1 is dogfighting with another fighter and that other fighter needs help. 
So in this case, I've got my wingman. Now you see there, um, he can only focus on one of us at any one time. And the DR1, when it's maneuvering, can end up going very, very, very slow because it has such a low stall speed. Now you see there that um, he was pulling up round um, to turn towards my wingman and also maybe try and get a shot off of me. And he had a little stall there. And that gave me just that split second to get in a few shots. And I've just clipped his engine there. That's a little bit of damage. So here I'm circling above him and again I'm waiting for that moment. What you should be looking for when you engage in the DL1 is that moment of stall. So there you see he's going in the turn and he turns very very slowly before he snaps round. So you have that little window of opportunity to get in a few shots. Now the real money shot as it were is when um, he's climbing up um, nose up to try and shoot at one of you. That's when you really want to catch him. Um, in multiplayer when I get about 95% of my DL1 kills it's when that DL1 is nosed up and stalling, trying to shoot at someone above him. So here we go. Here we go. So he, here he is. Um, again, I've, I've, unfortunately there, um, I couldn't quite get in with a shot. So um, I could have risked a ram there. That's where a noob or myself being a bit, of, a bit less careful may have uh, rammed him. But here we go. I've got a great opportunity here. So there he is. He's stalling. He's nosed up. He's stalling. And blam, I get in a really good burst into him. Um, so I've wounded the pilot, um, I've hit the engine, and uh, because he was disorientated there, my wingman was able to, to whip around and also get in a few shots. So now it's just a matter of finishing him off. So um, I stay above him, um, he's very disorientated, my wingman gets on his tail he, um, because of the uh, high level of injury. Um, in Rise of, Rise of Flight, as your pilot becomes more injured, um, you can't maneuver so well, and there we go, I finish him off and rip off what's left of his wing. So that is how we deal with the DR1. Um, now, don't feel like a coward if you're taking on the DR1 with a wingman. Don't forget that Werner Voss, the great World War I ace, was taken out by eight um, crack um, Royal Flying Corps pilots. So you see here, there it is, there's the money shot. So he's nosed up, he's stalled, and he's left himself vulnerable. It's that, that's the moment to get in there and uh, hit him hard. And then after that point, it's just a matter of finishing him off. And um, here you see my wingman is able to turn with him. Um, because he can't really manoeuvre, he's sort of struggling to stay um, airborne there. Um, I think actually my wingman actually kills the pilot there um, before I, I fly in and just rip off what's left of his wing. Um, so yes, if the great Werner Voss, um, if it took eight uh, crack pilots to shoot him down, uh, flying um, energy fighters, the SE-5, don't feel so bad um, if you and a wingman um, use this technique to take out the DR-1. Um, as I said, um, it's, it's about not playing by their rules. Um, your aircraft, um, the, the, if you're using the SPAD, it's, it's faster, it can climb better. So use that advantage. And if you're in that one-on-one -on -one situation and you don't think you can get that shot and you, you think you're going to risk losing that height differential, just disengage. Um, don't feel like you're being a coward. And whatever you do, don't get goaded like I did by some total see you next Tuesday uh, into getting into a turning battle that you'll lose. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Gary, NFF Gary for joining me very very useful to have you there to demonstrate uh, some of my stupidity i hope you found that useful as i said that's probably the um the biggest mistake you can make as a boom and zoomer um so don't feel that you always have to rush in and get the kill sometimes it really is um uh, about the wait good things um come to those who wait as the guinness advert says thanks very much guys see you in the skies and salute